Hey everybody, Marcus here with NextLevelRecording.com and thanks for checking out this video. I'm going to get right to the point. This video is going to be how to EQ bass guitar and I'm going to show you my take on EQing bass guitar. Let me just give you a listen of what we're working with today and then we'll get started. Cool, just your typical DI bass guitar. Now there's a few things that uh, can help you get the sound you're looking for when mixing lower frequencies. When I'm EQing bass guitar, um, I like to use Pro-Q2. Uh, this is from FabFilter, it's awesome. And getting started, I like to put a high pass filter on the bass guitar to about 100 hertz. What this does, it allows me to hear the mid-range frequencies better when I'm uh, EQing them, boosting, taking out, so uh, it just allows me to focus a little bit better. Um, after we do that, I like to typically tackle the mid-range. So what I do is I do a 12 dB boost or so, 9 dBs, uh, and I do a sweep from 100 hertz all the way up to 500, maybe 550 hertz. And I listen for an annoying frequency or a frequency that just doesn't sound pleasant to me, and then I cut it out. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, if you're listening on regular just earbuds you're probably not going to be able to hear this but if you're listening to uh listening to this on good monitors or or really nice headphones you'll you'll probably be able to listen so Cool. Well, I thought the uh, the 529 range was pretty nasally sounding, and I didn't really like the, the resonance around it. Um, so I took it out. You can see I took out a pretty good chunk of it. Remember that when you're EQing low frequencies, no cut is too big. If you need to take 12 dB out to get you the sound you want, then go ahead and take 12 dB out. Don't be focused on what the EQ looks like if it looks weird, because the looks don't matter. If you're, if you're really focusing on what it sounds like, you're going to get better results. So after I do the mid-range, I'm going to go ahead and lower my high-pass filter to around 40. I keep it around 30 to 40 in my mixes. Uh, you're going to feel this frequency more than, than hear it, but most of the stuff that we listen to music on, we're not even going to feel this, so I take it out. Um, this will also give you some headroom while you're mixing, so you're not clipping your, your master bus uh, at all. So now I like to check what my bass drum is doing, believe it or not. This is called complementary EQ. So I'm going to go to my bass drum EQ and I'm going to notice that the 64 hertz range is where this kick drum is really uh, has a lot of power. It's fundamental frequency. So this is boosted by about 3 dB. So I'm going to go to the bass. I'm going to add. Um, 64 decibel range and then I'm going to take it out by 3 dB. This is going to allow the bass drum and the bass guitar not to fight with, you, with each other in this region. It's going to allow the kick drum to have some power and, and have some space in the mix. So what I noticed about this bass guitar is that it was lacking some finger picking noise, especially for this song. Um, so the finger picking noise on a bass guitar is typically from 1000 hertz to about 3000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play, I'm going to boost a little bit, and I'm going to sweep until I find a sound that, that I, I find pleasant to the bass guitar. Cool. I think I went with 1984.9. Um, you don't have to get really exact. Just just go with what you're hearing. Uh, you notice I have a I have a short cue, a small cue on this. My bad. Um, and I'm not boosting too much. I'm boosting probably about almost two decibels. So you don't need too much here. Uh, and what this does, it allows the bass to cut through in the higher frequencies, so you can so you can hear and feel the bass guitar while it's playing. Now, I also noticed about this guitar that it is lacking a little bit of body. It's kind of just flat in that area. So what we're going to do, again, another boost and sweep in the 100 to 150, maybe a little bit more range. 
Um, you got to be careful in this area though because if you boost too much with too wide of a cue, then it really can muddy up your mix. So we're going to keep a narrow cue and we're going to boost again to what we feel is sounding good in the bass guitar. Cool. Well, I think I went with about 126.34 hertz. Um, I, I felt when I got up to 150, it kind of was a little bit too thick, a little bit too muddy for this. So I think the 126 sounds good. Now, again, I'm not boosting crazy. Uh, almost, almost 3 dB. I might go a little bit lower than that. But that's typically all I do for bass guitar. Um, remember, it's all about how you feel it sounds. There's no correct way to EQ or anything. So just really mess around with this stuff and, and, and really use your ear in this. So uh, let me give you a before and after so you can so you can hear what the difference is. I'm gonna bypass it and then as it's playing, I'll re-enable it and you'll be able to hear the difference. Cool. Well, you can see it cleaned up a little bit. It smoothed the bass guitar out. Um, also, notice that I'm I'm working in solo right now. I typically, wouldn't wouldn't EQ something in solo. I would normally mix and EQ with the entire song playing. This is because you can get something sounding really great in solo, and when you bring it back into the mix, it kind of falls apart. So always remember to to EQ with every element in the mix. Well, that's about it for this video. I appreciate you guys checking in. Uh, feel free to leave a comment, leave any kind of techniques you may be using or what's working for you. And feel free to check out our website, nextlevelrecording.com, where we're going to have uh, some more mix tips in our blogs. There's also some other things on there. Um, but until next time, I will see you then.